again and welcome to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick. And uh, we're both a little flustered. So I'm frazzled. I'm hungry. Tammy's hungry. We're both hungry. So this could go sideways like quick. Uh, I came up in the elevator after Tammy because I was on the phone in the foyer trying to make a dinner reservation for Kava tonight in Portsmouth because I have friends coming from New York and some... My friend's boyfriend is a flamingo guitar player, and he's playing uh, for some jazz thing at the jazz room. And I was like, it should not take like 15 to 20 minutes to make a dinner reservation, but apparently it now So does. it's funny because, you know, if you haven't noticed, what tends to happen when we're, we don't really do a lot of prep. I make little what? random. I have always remarkably um, prepared for this show. But it's funny the things that bubble up at the last minute that like, that's what, perfect. Because that was a bad momentary experience for you. And I just went through the same thing. And I don't care what restaurant it is. I'm not going to name any restaurants. But why are restaurants so woefully still broken? Where did the people that were working at restaurants before COVID go to, and it's a woman looked at me today and said that, she goes, where did the people go? And I can't, like Dan has one p pitch, you know, why? So well, recently, and it's not all restaurants, but I see a common struggle more than what used to be. Right. With restaurants, with being able to keep or get help. It's a constant, it seems to be, a con everybody seems to be short-staffed. I shouldn't say everybody, but most restaurants all seem to be short-staffed. And the bigger problem always seems to be in the kitchen. So, uh, I mean, I think there's, chef, there's a chef problem, there's a server <laughs> problem, there's a, a, a dishwasher yeah. problem. Well, I think there's problem. just, uh, uh, I mean, I think the service industry has been decimated in some ways. You know, if it's not broke, it, don't fix it if it ain't if it ain't broke if, don't fix it or whatever if it ain't fixed don't broke it yeah. whatever well and dan's um, pitch was he, he goes i think part of the problem is that restaurants have not uh, um adjusted for inflation which i don't disagree with but i don't think that's the only problem so so adjusting for inflation and what that would mean is actually updating your menus yep. to show the 50 percent increase in egg prices yep, or things. chicken thing you right, know right. thighs or whatever it is right i have started to see on restaurants them kind of doing the sticky tape on Over the, the menu the prices, prices but... which you know is reminiscent of brazil mm. in the mid 90s or you know last time we had hyperinflation and in the so, 70s before they went off the gold standard to make things Dan worse. And, Dan, so Dan and I, I mean, I have plenty, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good with time. I know how long it's going to take to do something. We can usually go out and in an hour's window, drive someplace, order lunch, eat lunch, and, and leave. We know which places take, you know, you right. know. You yep. know where, you know what the driving distance is and whatnot. So we went to a place today, and it doesn't matter where, and it's not a place that, has a lot of meat products so it's not like they're making burgers and wings and fried um, things yep. you know it's it, it's pretty much like sandwiches wraps salads nothing crazy and a lot of the menus because this happened to us a couple of weeks ago in peterborough as well where i was just like man there's really nothing on this well, menu i can this, eat that this isn't was very, like a sandwich or right. a car this was very this is a place that has a very um I wouldn't say limited menu. They have lots of things, but nothing complex. Right. So no reason. No it's reason. It's not like they were making the... the, the they the, got their frying burgers and the fryer's right. slow or whatever. Yeah. So we get there and the, the one waitress says, um, it's going to be a wait. And I said, well, and she goes, it might be like 15 or 20 minutes. And I'm like, oh, okay, as long as the food's going to come out because I'm, you know, that's... Right. I'm like, Although she is warning no. you. Right? So I was yeah. like, okay. So it was easily 20 minutes. Mm. First of all, if you own a restaurant, I understand that you don't like to seat people until you're able to wait on them. As a consumer, I'd rather sit there with a glass of water for a half an hour than stand someplace on my phone. Well, yeah. As long or as you tell you, me. You should uh, not get a glass of water. You should get a beer well, or that's a what glass I mean. of Order wine. Order beverage or and then so tell me it's going to be 20 right. minutes before they can take my well, order. Well, yeah, because then you're actually making money instead of the and person I'm fine standing with that. there on their phone. Right? I'm fine right? with that. So was without, it full or just short-staffed? Well, there were people. Okay. But there were a lot of people waiting also. Okay. And it makes me inquisitive because you're like, so, and she goes, well, the kitchen's backed up. Okay. So I'm like, oh, okay. 
So I'm, I go, well, let me look at a menu because let's know what we're ordering. Right. Like, we're not going to waste this. Okay. Yep. So then I start looking around and I'm like, I don't understand why the kitchen's backed up. These people already have food. Like, they're either finished. Like, there weren't 10 tables of people waiting for food. So what is the holdup in the place that makes wraps and salads? Like, what? So we finally get seated, order the food. Again, it's now like... 15 minutes i've ordered <laughs> i've ordered a turkey club with chips okay dan ordered a turkey wrap with chips this is like five minute prep stuff this right. is like super yep. and at this point now i'm really watching to see how many tables could possibly be in the queue and there just isn't the place had three waitresses and one person working in the kitchen and i felt bad for the wait i'm sure dan tipped her nice but at one point i had to get up and say you're gonna have to put it in a box i literally can't you know even if it's right there i still i'm gonna have to right. inhale it and all i kept thinking was what the heck happened to our restaurant industry well so i actually heard from uh, the owner of uh, 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 rogers campground up yep. north yep. right like uh he'll call me you know he's in his 70s yeah. he's, um run businesses in New Hampshire yeah. for a long time, right? And he was lamenting how bad it is in the North Country. So imagine Worse what we're than, seeing right. here, and then you look up there where it's a much more aging pool. Yeah. Um, it's uh, purely tourism driven, right? So right. so if people it's are coming in, right. it's seasonal. And he mentioned, and I don't know if he's 100% correct on this, but he did say that the last of the COVID benefits are running out in June. Oh. And I was like, who Ooh, is still, still getting benefits? Right. For, but I'm trying to answer the question of why, why where, where, where are where's like, the talent pool? Where are the people who should right. be fulfilling and doing these jobs? Because right. it's... It's and, boggling. And then I was like, and then I kind of get frustrated because this isn't just one instance. There's other restaurants that we just don't frequent as often because they're they're not dependable. Like I know, you know where you can go and get, you know, relatively. And I wonder like, are, like in this instance, I know that the owner wasn't in the establishment. And all I kept thinking was, well, you're the owner. Guess where you should be today? Right. In the kitchen. Yep. Because the person working in the kitchen obviously can't, make the plate and, and and honestly like it's starting to occur to me that i don't think younger people know how to make food no, anymore that's what I mean. so like what's gonna happen 10 years from so like uh, robots are right? gonna be making your cricket but i mean even too. Then, i was like so what could a restaurant because i always try to i've worked in the restaurant before i understand like i am super super patient i with, will admit i was the world's worst server but you know what's 16. involved yes and i mean i know what's I mean, involved i think i'd be okay now right i, just I know wasn't good at i know what the hostess has to deal with i know what the waitress has have to deal with. I understand that the waitress can't control how fast the food's going. Like, I understand and so many aspects. it does sound aspects. like sh they were trying to mitigate to it. So you're frustrated, but they did warn you it, it was going to be right. a slow But it's roll. like, it just made me kind of go like, why aren't rest if, if this is an ongoing problem, because I this is seems to be, I would rather, I'm not a restaurant owner, but it does curtail your menu. Like literally, right. if I had walked in today and they said, look, we've got kitchen short staff shortages. We only have these four items today. We would have picked one of the four items. You know, but that also involves uh, a level of management but, that just kind of seems missing as well. well like, I, I don't mean, know, man. Like, cause it, okay, we both. COVID broke the world. Like, they the response to COVID. They could have had these two, a turkey club and a turkey right. wrap and a salad. And I don't and know just, what, and like it could have right. just been. Yep. And yeah. we would, and people would have dealt with it. Well, but I'm it, still, I'm very excited about my dinner tonight because I love that <laughs> restaurant. And really, the guy was trying to be like, "Look, it's a prefix four course that has three or four yeah. options for each one." Yeah. Um, you know, it's fancy. It's, yeah. it's you know, we're, we're, yeah. we're having a little experience. Um, so I understand that he was also trying to be like, look, we, you know, we recommend you guys have two hours yeah. to do the four course. Yeah. Let's leave the kitchen. But I was just also kind of like, dude, like, you know, it doesn't, it shouldn't take me 20 minutes to make a dinner right. reservation. So now so, here, they're not <laughs> so they're over managing. Right. These people are, uh, well, uh, it's just, it, yeah. as a consumer, it can be frustrating. And it was funny. Not funny. It Remember was sad, actually. Remember the olden actually. days when consumers were always right? Yeah, that's not the case anymore. No. Um, <laughs> we were talking to somebody the other day, 
and they, the wife was telling me how they had they were going to dinner at Hanover Chop House because they were talking about Manchester and like what the hell is going on in Manchester. And she said, we were early. She goes, and there was no way I was walking around in Manchester. And I thought, see, this is a problem because it is getting really, really bad. I don't, I, I know the, the police can tell you their crime isn't up. This, everybody can tell you things are rosy. I printed out because I was like, what the actual heck? Did you read about the guy who was in somebody's basement? Um, this, uh, the victim told police that she was on the first floor, floor of her house on Wilson Street when she heard things being moved around in her basement. The victim opened the door and was immediately met with a male she did not know. In fear, she closed the door, but the suspect opened it and lunged at her with a knife. And then, oh my goodness! And I'm like, and they eventually found him, right? And they charged him with all these things, including breach of bail. So I go, did a quick Google because I'm like, well, what the actual? This same guy, his name is don't quote. Um, his name is he's 50 years old. So this isn't a 20 year old. Like, come on, right. Joshua Converse. Um, he was arrested in March of 2021, so two, two years, years ago, ago. Um, for stealing packages off oh, of people's porches and was arrested and whatever. So I'm like, so is he still out on bail from that, from two years ago? Because that's another problem if that's the case. But I'm like, can you imagine if you open up your basement door and there's somebody there that probably, that wouldn't end well in my house. No, no you would uh, be all pew-pewed <laughs> and riddled well, with Well, I mean, because what are you supposed to do house? if there's someone in? And no. then somebody I did I mean, see, I'm, I'm not Facebook friends with Joel Vassar, but Dan is, so he showed me a post and I was like, what? There was somebody who commented and goes, well, how come that guy got arrested? Because the teens that were in my basement destroying things and smoking pot and peeing and stuff, they just got, like, shooed along as trespassers. And I'm like, yeah, there, there's a distinct problem. I don't think people... So I'm trying to figure out what that is. Because, you know, maybe like five years ago, we were talking about the bail reform. Yeah. And we know... And this is not just a New Hampshire problem. This is a problem we're seeing across the nation, but in particular in places like uh, San Francisco, right? Where I think I read a statistic and we talked about it on the show where I think it was 97% of crimes are committed by the yes. same 300 yeah. people, Yeah, right? it's not like everybody's so, committing so, crime. So, so you look at that and you're like, but there is clearly a solution to this problem because clearly these people right. are the problem. And so it becomes, how are those small amount of people, people disrupting the whole thing yes and and what needs to be fixed there because i don't think it's a it's necessarily a bail reform thing not completely not no. completely then the question becomes so having grown up and lived in in third world countries and sort of have a good sense of like how things work in other parts of the world one of the things that was really amazing when we moved to America is you were like, oh, actually, it kind of looks like the courts work. You don't have this thing where people yeah. are like, oh, you're out on bail for like seven years while they're figuring out and what <laughs> charges, you know, which is kind of a a, a um, symptom of second to third yeah. world stuff, right? Like you just, the, 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 the courts process don't isn't work, right. justice doesn't work, nothing is quick, everything just drags on. By way of example, the first case I ever did on my own in South Africa, and I wasn't actually technically allowed to do it because I was younger than 21 and you weren't supposed to be in that court till you were 21, but I was just like, ah, was I was working for the legal aid board and there was a dad who had come to our law firm and they were like, will you take this case pro bono? My son got arrested and charged with murder at the age of 16. He's been in jail for three years. He is now 19. So a juvenile in a adult, uh, facility. adult facility. And he had never been charged. So he got arrested, he got caught up, he got put into the system, and then he just kind of got caught up yep, in, in the, being the, in the system. system, right? And and I got him out on bail 
Uh, one try. <laughs> uh, many years later, I did hear, I think he was back in jail for murder. <laughs> so I may have let like a really bad guy out. I don't know. Or they sneaked someone right. out in the carpet, out of the jail, whatever. But my point is, I always think of that thing because I was like, oh, I was like, that is the legal system I left in South yep. Africa and then I came here. And now it's I see swiveling these towards and it's really, it's, it's, and it's happening fast. Well, and where... I feel like uh, I've got all these notes. It, right. it kind of ties into the, um, the, the conversation yeah. that we've had over the week, over the weekend with friends and whatnot about the use of words and how things are, do not they don't use the same words that we used to use. So a friend of ours made a post that he was at a city park with his uncle and his niece or somebody, you know, went to the park to play. And they came across um, a young woman who was overdosing, turned purple. Our friend called nine, you know, the went to the fire department or whatever. Um, another person gave them Narcan and was doing CPR and eventually the fire department showed up and whatever. And then like they all kind of get up, dispose of their, you know, excess items and go drive off in a cab. And he <laughs> called and I was like, what? So he said there was a junkie in the park and all this, if you could have seen the comments and then he made a, a, another post later and said, so I witnessed an overdose in the park and described it. And people were less concerned about the person that was dead for four minutes than the fact that I called well, them a junkie. junkie. And so, so one of the things you'll hear the thinkers of the world say frequently is um, you can only solve problems if you call them by the right name. And we should know what a problem is in order to do it. So some of this like weirdness around language yes. is actually a neo-Marxist tactic. I was gonna say it's very counterproductive to actually succeeding at things. It's 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 on purpose, yep. right? Because then you start to again now for whatever that thread was, no one was fighting or discussing or trying to come up with solutions. Like oh my god, that's to, terrible. To the it actual was, oh my problem. god, why did you call it's them like, a junkie? How dare you? call this person this and it's like well, i can call you whatever i want first of that's all true. that's free speech that is the part of it <laughs> that they don't like because that is part of the pushback on free speech yep. is this notion that if we can control your speech then we can control the situation so it, so we want you to call it you know uh uh, I don't even know what the word du jour is. I mean, are you, you're not allowed to use drug addict. No, you're you can say junkie, uh, did, vagrant. You can't. Well, uh, you can't call somebody a vagrant because they're, say, urinating on the sidewalk. They don't want you to call. I, this is just think about the the breakdown of words. We all, for those who don't understand how language works, you know, words are made up of things. It's, there's, you know, <laughs> they're not just random letters strung together. So if you unbox something that means it was boxed and you unbox it fair so how is someone unho unhoused no, that's a uh, new word unhoused they're the unhoused and i'm like we didn't look all of it right? all of it is so stupid because if someone can actually explain the following to me i am 100 percent open to listening but if I have my my my, my language <laughs> stuff right, so I remember. So in South Africa, when we talk about different races, we mm -hmm. had white people and black yep. people, and then a group called colored people. And in South Africa, that was never a slur. It was literally a mixed race of black and white people and they were who cults. spoke Afrikaans. So they actually identified more like on the white side so they I were guess. they were darker skinned white well uh, i mean they were brown people yeah, like that's a what I'm whole uh, you know but but whatever right so 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 in south africa they had you know crazy apartheid mm -hmm. so they actually had classifications and they would break things down according to uh like i have a friend and her life trauma was half her family was classified as colored and half her family was classified as white. And they separated their family, right? So anyway, so that was, so I remember when I moved to America 
I think I once inadvertently used the term colored people, meaning the people from my country who are called that, not and someone took an, offense. an insult or anything, right? And I was taken to task on my language and I, and I internalized that and I was like, oh, okay, like, you know, be careful about certain words, you know, and, and learn to do it like Americans like it. So fine. So I was like, never ever say the word colored people <laughs> in America. I didn't know it was now, now you, have you have to say people of color. And if someone can explain to me how from the 50s we I went know. from color people, bad, wrong, don't say it, to now if you don't say people of color, you're racist, I'm like, it's it nuts. doesn't make sense. It doesn't. It's like Someone is manipulating people and someone is doing it in order to keep well, I mean, us all it, mad I mean, we, and divided. We've said this numerous times, or at least I've said it numerous times. I, I highly dislike the way we use the word homeless because I think the average person thinks homeless is people living on the street. But when they collect data, they include... Anybody who does not have a permanent place of their own. So if you're, what? if you lose your your home and you're staying in your brother's apartment, you're still considered so homeless. At homeless or unhoused? No, because, homeless. Okay. So I don't know what the hell unhoused is anymore. I don't. I think unhoused might be the people living on the street well, what it in the is, shelters. It's possible, right? So, so I do think often. <laughs> Part of the problem is a lot of people with good intentions just come up with idiotic ways mm. to fix it, right? <laughs> so, 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 so you're trying to like be like, oh, we don't want to make the homeless guy feel bad. Or, oh, we don't want to make the junkie feel bad. How about we but don't want to make the homeowner feel bad? How about we don't want to make the taxpayer well, feel bad we'll or the business start feel bad? There. But then it's also like maybe part of that feeling bad, i.e. either shame or yep. something, is part of the yep. human condition of the function. Yep. If you don't want to be a junkie, someone has to call you a junkie, so you stop <laughs> being a junkie. Speaking of idiots, People used to call me a drunk. <laughs> Drunk. I stopped drinking. Right, right? Hello, people. Um, speaking of idiotic solutions before we <laughs> run out of time, um, tonight at the Rex Theater, I think from 6 to 7.30, is the city is having um, a branding seminar oh, because be we're going to spend <laughs> $1.5 to $2 million worth of American uh, Rescue Plan Act so federal tax dollars. That's why your eggs are to, more expensive. Wait, to rebrand Manchester, because if we, I know if we just come up with a new logo or a catchphrase, that'll make people think because, differently because of Manchester. Because you know what won't it do it is like a home unhoused shelter right where you get off the highway. Can you imagine? Is worth this is what we're spending dollars. times on. And Joyce Craig thinks this is a great idea. We just need to rebrand things. We don't need to change the problems. We don't need to do something about the fact that people are hanging out in other people's basements and attacking them with knives. We should just... We need a catchphrase and a logo. See, what it is, color is, is what we're seeing is we're seeing the smashing of perception and reality. So if you listen very carefully when statists talk to you, they will talk about the perception. So it's not what is, it is what we can persuade you to believe it, to is. Believe it is. And we are at a point in our time where we are smashing between reality and perception. So they want to tell you one story. So COVID mania, actually a great example. I have friends who d really didn't leave their apartments for like a year who, you know, thought it was crazy if you didn't wear a mask and whatever. And that was their perception. There were those of us who just went on with life and right. our reality was life's normal right. we're just doing it's like when you said earlier that people are still getting covid money you and i are like what like i've been camping Why? for two summers without since covid right like, what? i mean and then i saw a post this week where it was some poor lady who i think is like literally she has stockholm syndrome yeah. right who was who was like crying on twitter because people weren't wearing masks at the airport anymore and i was like lady that's been like 
who like have you just not traveled for so long and you just thought maybe that would but i was like it was a I, year it was a year years ago. no it was a year, uh, a year ago, ago because, because when we went to florida to get married we had to wear masks yeah but i mean that was it right it was that was over a year ago and actually i think it changed in july maybe right. because but i mean um, it's I not remember... a now thing no but i just you know so i think we broke people we always say that we broke people people who don't you know, like, you don't want to say, I don't think I'm super, super smart, but I also know that I'm not super, super dumb. But I do think people have this ability to think. Well, I think what we should be considering is, like, who, like, who, who's making you think what, yes. right? Like, what is the media you're consuming? Is it a little balanced? Like, I try and follow different people yep. and different sides of things. But words have meanings, yep. just to bring it full circle. Um, there's a point to actual mean words. I'm sorry. Right. It's, it's part of it. Like, not everything can be kumbaya. And sweet and pleasant. And I mean... There are problems that actually need to be solved. Well, it'd be no different than a child. Like, if your child is a brat... There is a reason we call your child a brat. It's not because... Don't be bratty. Don't be a brat. But I mean, you know what I mean? Like, you don't get labeled as a brat because you dropped a toy no no you get labeled as a brat because you're a brat and sometimes people say you're, you know don't stop being a brat and then you're like oh i'm being a brat okay and so you do it with the, it, you know you do it with children but we somehow now can't do it with adults well, because we can't be- hurt anybody's feelings and everybody deserves equal respect and equal everything and that's just not how life works no and the thing is also you can't actually have a functioning society that is based purely on everyone's <laughs> subjective feelings. I feel there has this to way. be some rationality and logic, which are the basic rules where we agree, okay, this is kind of how it works. So a basic rule might be we do not expect people to shoot up drugs and die in public parks. It's just not that a thing. Just it's not like, an okay you thing. You know, like if we want to talk about the social contract. Right. I have some opinions right? about that, no, right? I mean, but that's a that's a given. So no, very few people think that that isn't a problem. Uh, so if you're not willing to say that is not acceptable, you get more of it. So sometimes not, you have to say mean things if right. you don't want the mean things to become the norm. And sadly, it does start to seem feel more and more like in Manchester, in particular. <laughs> these bad things are becoming Although, more and more. I, I hope there it's getting some better. I know the park is a little cleaner. I was out there yesterday. The, the, the but that's tiles taken a there. lot of work on a lot of people's part. Not work just that park, park, I'm saying everywhere. Right. Um, Dan and I joked because we went for a walk down along the Merrimack in Bedford, right, on the Heritage Trail, I'm mm-hmm. part of it. There's no homeless anywhere. There's yeah. no trash anywhere. Right. There's no anything. And it's like right next to You know why there are no homeless people? Martha's Vineyard. You know why? Because someone sent a kind of a few truckloads, yeah. busloads, airplane a, a loads, migrant. whatever. And those people on Martha's Vineyard were like, actually, we don't tolerate yeah. the homeless here. So if they're allowed to do it, yeah. we're allowed to do it. So so anyways, maybe Put we'll, that maybe, maybe we'll get, and don't smoke. Maybe it. the feedback from the community <laughs> will get us a new color scheme for a logo and that'll fix everything. <laughs> Oh, maybe, so see, maybe. <laughs> see how easy the shows are some days. Uh, that's all we have for this week. We're going to run out of time. We, we have did a, say we were hungry. Yep, I'm have just a, using that as a my defense. safe and enjoyable um, long weekend. It's Memorial Day. Um, that is supposed to be in memory of those who lost their lives in the military is really what Memorial Day is supposed to be about. Um, if you live next to um, one of those memorial plaques, be aware that they might come um, on Monday morning and shoot off taps because the oh. first time that happened to me on Parker Street, I was like, what is happening? <laughs> the revolution is like come. somebody's shooting. And it's fine. It's harmless. It's the VFW doing it. Anyways, that's all we have for this week. We will be back next week. Will you be here? Um, I am here next, next week. Not the, okay, yeah, so the- we'll be back at, on Tuesday. We'll, have more wonderful things to talk about. Oh, on no, show. I won't be here because we film on Wednesdays. I'm flying You're on right. Wednesdays. You're right. Sorry. Yeah. That's okay, all Okay, so that's it. Bye. <laughs>